All right, so this video is about understanding or reading the root locus after you sketch it. So before I start discussing it, let's step back for a second and let's look at the solution of a transfer function uh, with respect to the Dirac delta function, which is one in the Laplace domain. So this Dirac delta function is important to understand natural response, unforced response of a dynamical system. All right, let's begin with uh, this case. Let's say this, this uh, transfer function has a pole at minus S0. In this case, its solution, Y, output, will satisfy this. And here, C0 is a constant multiplied by e to the power of minus S0t. And here, settling time can be approximated by 4 divided by minus S0 seconds. In other words, starting from some initial condition, this solution will die out around 4 seconds if S0 is 1. In this case, 4 divided by absolute value of minus 1 is 4 seconds if S0 is 1. Now, let's look at the second case where you have two poles. They are both real. In, if Since they are real, you can write the solution like this. Right? This is a transfer function having two poles. You are applying direct delta function, and this is the solution unforced response of the system. In this case, if these poles are close to each other, like minus 1, minus 2, then the settling time will be between this and these seconds. We are using the same equation, but what now with S1 and S2. So settling time will be somewhere on this interval. As this being said, um, the dominant pole uh, will be the one closest to the imaginary ax axis. So settling time will be more close to this one. And now, if they are separated from each other by five times or more, let's say this is at minus five, this is at minus one, then you could ignore the faster minus five t pole, and the solution will be close to the one, more close to the one that is close to the imaginary axis if this is five x or more because your eyes will not be able to see this effect, it will vanish almost immediately as compared to the second one. Now let's talk about imaginary poles or complex poles, poles having imaginary component. In this case, for this transfer function, the solution set will satisfy this. You will have e to the power of minus S4t, which is coming from the real part of this complex pole. So settling time will be 4 divided by minus 4 seconds. And now because of the imaginary component, this e to the power of minus s 4 t term will be multiplied by cosine and sine terms having frequency omega 4, which is coming from here. All right. With this in mind, let's call it, I'm going to refer to it, case 1, when you have two real poles. Let's call it case 2, when you have two imaginary poles, and move to the next. All right, so now let's look at this um, block diagram. As you know, we sketch root locus by using the forward loop transfer function, and it shows how a closed loop system, this one, uh, basically behaves or how the poles of the closed loop system moves as a function of gain k. If we fix gain k at certain points, closed loop behavior can be understood as we did in the previous page. No different. So we sketch root locus for this using forward loop transfer function to summarize and it will show how its poles move for the closed loop system, how closed loop system poles move. So for example, let's say, let's consider this, this, and this coming from T of S. Here is the root locus looking like this. Let's say we fixed gain at K1, 
you are here and here. This closed loop in this case, if you apply drag delta as C of t, output response will be no different than case two discussed in the previous page. Because for this k equals to k1 value of a root locus, your closed loop system will have two poles because your system has two branches and they have a real part minus S4, they have an imaginary part omega 4, omega 4 minus J and J. If you increase the gain further, let's say K equals to K2, you are here and there, then closed loop system will have two real poles for this value of gain K and they are real. So in this case solution, if you apply C of t direct delta and write the solution for y of t, this solution will be no different than case one. So, so here, no oscillations because you are not going to get cosine and sine terms, whereas here there will be oscillations. When you have oscillations, this is an over, uh, under, uh, under damp system response for this value. No oscillations, this is an over damp system response. And if you select your gain K to be, let's say, K3 at this point, this is the critical damp point. All right, with this in mind, let's move to some examples. Okay, I sketched these by hand, but I used MATLAB to generate data. So these plots, time responses are consistent with uh, what I get from MATLAB Simulink. All right, first of all, this is your T of S, right? You have a zero at zero and minus five. So in this case, your root locus will start from forward loop poles and approach to the asymptotes like this. I picked several values for gain K. For example, if you choose gain K to be one, one closed loop pole will be at minus 0.25, another one will be at minus 4.75. In this case, there is a five times and more between these two poles. So settling time can be approximated by four divided by 0.25 seconds. And since both poles are real, I expect no oscillations. Indeed, this response shows uh, the, how y of t behaves as a function of time. And here I applied comment to be one. Um, if we apply drag delta and give some initial condition, you are going to get, sorry, you are going to get something like this that converges to zero around the same settling time, okay? So now if you choose your gain K to be at the critical damp point, when K equals to 6.25, since in at this point you are at minus 2.5, your settling time will be four divided by minus 2.5 seconds. So system will be faster and approach like this. No oscillations. Now, if you increase your gain further, for example, this yellow K equals to 20, your system will have oscillations like this, but it converges around the same time because if you look at the real part of this yellow closed loop pole when k equals to 20, it is again at minus 2.5, so settling time will not change. System will get more oscillations as you move k further and further. Let's move to another example. Now you have a system that has an forward loop transfer function is pole at zero and minus five and uh, a zero at minus 10. So pole at zero and minus five and zero at, a pole at zero and minus five and zero at minus 10. All right, so when you sketch the root locus, you are going to have a shape like this. Now, I applied, I select gain K at specific values. For example, if you select gain K to be, 0.85, then your two closed loop poles will meet here at the breakout point and their value will be minus 2.9. So four divided by minus 2.9 is absolute value. System will converge like this without oscillations since they these poles doesn't have imaginary part. Now, 
when you select gain k to be 15, you are going to have certainly imaginary values and real part will be at minus 10. So system will converge around four divided by minus 10 seconds and it will have some overshoot. Now, once you select gain k to be 29.1, system will converge faster because settling time will be, uh, this value will be more than minus 10 at minus 2.9. In this case, you have a slight oscillation, actually slight overshoot, not an oscillation, and system converges much faster. So this is what happens after sketching root locus. You can analyze stability, settling time, and transients as a function of uh, gain k at some fixed locations when gain k changes from k equals to zero, k equals to zero to k equals to infinity, and k equals to infinity. In this example, basically, we now have this transfer function s plus 2 divided by s to the power of 3 plus 5 s to the power of 2 minus s so forward loop transfer functions poles are located at here here and here and the zero located at here and when you sketch root locus you have this blue line one in here and one going from the, like this you have three branches, one, two, three. So you are going to have, in this case, three closed loop poles. So when you fix gain K at certain locations, you need to look at three closed loop poles. For example, if you fix gain K at 1.72, one closed loop pole here, other one will be here, and the third one will be here. In this case, because of this and this, system will oscillate forever, and you are going to see a marginal stable system response like the red response corresponding to k equals to 1.72. If you select gain k, say 11, two poles will be located at minus 0.55 with some imaginary component, and the third one will be somewhere on this line. In this case, there will be a 5 x and more distance so closed up system transients will be dominantly determined by these poles so first of all this minus 0.55 settling time will be 4 divided by my absolute value of 0.55 seconds system will have some oscillations and converges around this the purple line finally if we increase gain k further and further let's say 200, you are going to get this yellow response. Now, let's look at the settling time. In this case, two closed loop poles will have a real part at minus 1.49. Their settling time alone is 4 divided by this minus 1.47, around 2.72 seconds. Now, the third pole will approach somewhere close to minus 2, so it's alone settling time will be 4 divided by minus 2, 2 seconds. So since this is not 5k or more, I expect settling time between basically 0.72 to 2 seconds. And if you look at the simulation result, settling time is around 2.5 seconds, exactly within this interval, more close to this since the I, poles close to the imaginary axis will play more dominant role in determining closed loop systems um, settling time. Finally, since you have two poles that has imaginary components oscillate and one pole doesn't oscillate, overall system response os makes oscillations since uh, you have some poles um, that has some imaginary components. All right, that's it. I hope you will find this helpful and this video helps you to understand um, stability, transients, and settling time, how you read them from root locus. Before I quit in this example, also let's talk about stability. We say that 
when for gain k greater than 1.72 closed loop system remains stable when gain k equals to 1.72 it is marginally stable if gain k is less than 1.72 system is unstable all right thanks